Hi guys. Um, so at Band of Snatch Reviewers, we have all, at one point or another, dyed our hair in the name of cosplay. Um, so I thought I'd bring you a little video uh, to show you the basics of it and the do's and don'ts. Um, dyeing your hair for cosplay can be considered a bit of an extreme option, so it's always best to consider all of your options before you go ahead. The first option is always, of course, wigs. So this is an old boy, um, he's going to be used for demonstration purposes in a minute. Um, but since I started cosplaying way back when, uh, the quality and availability of wigs has come a long, long way. Um, there are so many colours and styles these days that it's often easier, cheaper and safer to simply buy a wig for each cosplay that you want to do. This can be found on eBay, on Wish, uh, Coscraft, uh, Arda, there are many places online that you can do this. However, if you want to um, try something a bit different, um, the other, you've got other options. So a second option you have is something called hair chalks. Um, these are Sarah's. Uh, they work best on lighter hair, so blonde generally. Um, and they come in a little packet. And we have found that you can actually use normal chalk. Um, but she got these as a present, so for demonstration purposes. I'm not sure how well it will work on a wig, but um, you literally, it's coming out a little bit. You just draw it on. Uh, it wouldn't be good for covering large areas. It would be for things like streaks. So it probably works better on normal hair than it does synthetic wigs, but as you can see, it's got a little blue streak. Um, so the benefits of these are it's, it's, um, it's temporary, it's easy to wash out with just a bit of shampoo and it'll come out. Um, they're relatively cheap compa um, compared to wigs and things and it's reusable so you, it's not a one time use thing, you can just put it in whenever you fancy. Number three, if you do just want streaks you could go for something like clip in wefts. Um, I don't have um, any examples um, to hand, whether I know Sarah Stroud through wig has one so I'll put a picture here. Um, and all it is is a coloured clip-in uh, wefts. You can get them on eBay, you can get them on Wish, you can even get them on Coscraft and that kind of thing. Um, and you literally just clip it into your hair so you've got a little streak. Uh, I have done it for Rogue in the past, however, I think I trashed that wig, um, so I can't show you. So number four is hair paint. Um, again, I don't have this one to hand, however, it often comes in spray cans. You can find them on eBay. Um, you can also get them for quite cheap in fancy dress shops. Around Halloween, they tend to sell it as well. So it's quite cheap, it's easy to get hold of. Uh, it's, it washes out really easily. However, it also tends to be a bit messy and uneven with the coverage. So it's not, not the best um, thing to use. However, in a pinch, it will do. Number five is face paint. So water-based face paints like uh, Snazaru and Meron can actually be used safely on hair as well. I know Mel's done it for um, Mystique um, a couple of times and Sarah's done it for uh, Yes. Um, so I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so I'll just give it a go on my little model here. go. Okay, so again this is relatively cheap and easy to find. Um, it's also very easy to wash out so again step in the shower, bit of shampoo, it's all gone. Um, it gives a nicer coverage than spray paint does um, but it isn't the easiest to work with. Um, it can take a lot of time as Sarah found to cover a full head of hair so it's probably good for things like darkening the roots or doing streaks but if you want full, full hair coverage you're probably better off trying to find something uh, different. So number six is uh, coloured hair clay. And this is what Sarah currently uses for her Yes cosplay. Um, and you have a look inside. It smells really nice as well. So uh, you use it a bit like 
any normal sort of hair hair clay or styling wax that kind of thing and I will do another streak under here as you can see it's got a nice blue streak so these can be a bit tricky to use however once you get the hang of it it's quite quick to apply uh, it's easy to style and it also washes out really easily with shampoo again I'm not sure how well it shows up on darker hair um, It does actually really show up on dark hair. <laughs> um, so there we go. Uh, a nice blue streak. So something else that Sarah dug out for me from her box of treasures is actually a hair mascara. So it's very similar to the um, hair clay. I've not actually seen it work, but we'll give it a go. Because it's got a, a brush built in, it's actually quite easy to apply, but it would probably not work well for a whole head of hair. You would probably be better off um, using hair clay if you want full coverage, but for streaks, this seems like a really nice option. Okay, so number seven is temporary dyes. Um, these can be a bit hit and miss to whether they work. Uh, they're most effective on lighter hair and fade after a few washes. Um, it can be a bit of a trial and error finding a dye that works on your hair. Um, there are quite a few good uh, brands that I could recommend. Um, Manic Panic is actually what I've currently got in uh, the purple in the bottom of my hair. Um, but I did have to bleach the bottom first before I could put this on. Um, so that is Manic Panic. Crazy Colour is another one, um, and Directions, which I don't think we have any of in the house. Um, I can show you how these work. Uh, so with these, you put it in, You leave it to work for about 30 minutes to an hour and then you wash it off and then the dye should stay in your hair for a few washes. It will also stay on your fingers for a few washes as well. Um, so you best use the, uh, the gloves to do it. Um, so with this you wouldn't leave it in like that. Um, it is designed to be washed out so please don't just try and use it as a hair clay. That's, that's not how it's supposed to be used. Okay, so the last one I'm going to talk you through is permanent dyes. Now, Schwarzkopf actually have quite a few really cool colours. They tend to be either permanent or semi-permanent, so they'll either wash out in a month or maybe sort of three months. Um, so these are actually a bit hit and miss for me. Uh, the red doesn't work on me, but the purples tend to. So, don't know. Um, but... Again, it can be a bit trial and error finding one that actually works for you. Now, inside the box is everything you need. Uh, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, it comes with a bottle, uh, another squeezy bottle. You pour one into the other, you shake it up, and you pour it on. It also comes with conditioner, which my hair very much appreciates. So those are all the options. Um, if you do decide you want to actually dye your hair, we would advise getting it done professionally for the first time around, especially if you're using bleach in any way to lighten your hair, or you want a particular pattern effect, like dip dyes, ombres, streaks, um, they all take practice, so you're best off uh, getting a professional to do it first. So when home dyeing, we do have a few tips and tricks for you. Um, so always, always read and follow the instructions. Every brand has its own directions for use. Some need to be applied to wet hair, others dry hair, and each will have a different working time, so please, please check those. Always do an allergy patch test. 
Um, the last thing you want the day before a con is to come up with a nasty rash or get rushed into hospital because you've had an anaphylactic reaction to it. Um, so always do the patch test. Um, if you are unsure on the colour it will take on your hair or if the colour will turn out the way you particularly want it to, then you can do something called a strand test. So you basically cut a small lock of hair from somewhere that you're not going to notice it, um, mix a little bit of the dye up and try it out. Um, and that way you're not going to do the whole lot and then find you absolutely hate it. If you are pre-bleaching your hair um, and these little kits have a powder and a liquid and you mix them together. But if you are pre-bleaching, do not leave it on any longer than the instructions say. It will damage your hair. If it's not light enough the first time, you can do a couple of applications over the course of a few days, giving yourself time to condition it between um, between bleaching, and that way you're less likely to end up with hair like straw. Always have a friend on hand to help you out. I do Sarah's, Sarah does mine, it works. Um, so basically it's very difficult to tell, especially if you're doing something like a dip dye or an ombre, or, or like trying to do the back of your head, it's very difficult to tell if uh, if you've missed a bit and you really don't want the, the dye to come out really patchy so it's always better to have somebody on hand. <laughs> Next, buy your own gloves. Um, now these temporary dyes um, especially don't come with any gloves and it is difficult to wash out your hands um, but the the dye, the dye um, the gloves that come in these are pretty useless. That you can't, they're one size fits all, so fits nobody, um, and they're, they're just unpleasant to work with. Um, so these, I think, are nitro ones, but you can also get um, vinyls, uh, which they fit nicely, and then you can do what you need to do. You can tell I'm a nurse. Um, so in those shops, uh, you can also buy little dyeing kits, so you can have a little bowl, a little brush. It tends to be easier to work with this than it is trying to pour the dye onto your hands and work like that. So yeah, with these you can just brush it on, nice and easy, you can form patterns and that kind of thing. Uh, it's a, a way of being a lot more precise with your application. Next, always put something on the floor. So bin liner, a mat, anything, you do not want to be dropping this on your floor. Um, your best bet is also to do it somewhere like the kitchen or the bathroom, anything that has wipeable floors just in case you miss the bin liner. Um, so we always do ours in the kitchen. Next, cover your hairline, your ears, your neck, your cheeks with Vaseline. Uh, it makes up cleaning up excess dye a lot easier and it prevents your skin from staining on that sort of vein as well. If you can get a shower cap to cover your hair whilst the dye is developing, uh, you're not going to ruin any furniture or anything whilst you wait. Um, and we also have um, like a, a hair dye hoodie or a t an old t-shirt so that when we're applying it we're not going to ruin our nice new t-shirts. Uh, one I found on the uh, Manic Panic website is actually that you are supposed to, with temporary dyes, uh, warm your hair with a hairdryer for a few minutes whilst uh, after it's been applied um, to help the hair dye sort of develop and take to your hair. Um, another tip that they gave us was to use white vinegar to s help set it in. I don't particularly want to smell like vinegar so I've not tried this one. Um, as I mentioned before, um, the temporary dyes uh, like that one can actually stay on your hair longer than the 30 minutes. Um, as they don't contain, contain any bleaching agents like ammonia or peroxide, you can actually leave it on for about an hour if you particularly want. Um, just make sure you check the ingredients to make sure there isn't anything damaging in it. Um, a lot of these are actually um, vegan these days, they're made from things like vegetable dye. So perfectly natural, perfectly safe. Uh, next one is to uh, rinse the dye out with cool or tepid water uh, rather than hot. Um, this helps it stay in. Um, and it's also recommended for any future washes you do for as long as you want your hair dye to stay in to keep it at a cooler temperature. So 
it is advisable to dye your hair a few days prior to Khan rather than the day before. So if something goes wrong, you have time to fix it. Now I have done this. I attempted to bleach my hair and then uh, dye it purple for Alcon um, about six years ago and it ended up looking like a parakeet. I was orange streaks, purple streaks, pink streaks, it was not pleasant. Um, so I would advise doing it a few days before so you don't have that mad rash of having to go to Tesco's to buy some new hair dye to cover the mistakes you've made and hoping your hair doesn't fall out. Um, Similarly, if you're using things like the clay or paint or chalks, do a test beforehand so you make sure you're not spending a lot of hours on the day of the con trying to figure out if it's going to work, how it's going to work. Um, also test out any Steiner products to make sure that they don't react with um, the, the dye or whatever you happen to be using on your hair. Um, sometimes things go clumpy and you, you don't want that. You want your cosplay to go nice and smooth. And the final piece is please, please do not use the temporary dye or the permanent dye or bleach on your eyebrows. Um, there is specific stuff for that, um, face paints and that is fine, but please don't put things on your eyebrows that are not supposed to be there. Uh, there are, again, there are specific things you can use for that. Okay, so there we go. Those are a few tips and tricks on how to change your hair colour for cosplay. Uh, if you have any suggestions, pop them in the comments below. Uh, we might even give them a go before our next con. Right, see ya!